Judy Jackson and today I'm talking to you about the second of my cookbooks which is called A Feast in 15 Stories. Now the interesting thing about it is that it has no pictures and that's why the stories are so important. At the time I wrote it, which was 1995, you could go into a bookshop and see many books by the top chefs and you'd be overwhelmed by the photographs and the very long recipes and you might have been a little bit daunted. My idea was to take all the scariness out of cooking. One of the most favourite chapters I have is called Disasters. You might wonder why. And that's because I believe that everyone has disasters in the kitchen. Even experienced cooks, with them things can go wrong too. And for me, I look back on some of the worst episodes I've had and now I can smile about them. So what's coming up, I'm going to select one, just one, which I think is unusual enough and interesting enough to make you want to think, ah, there's something here that I might not find anywhere else. So where will you find it? Unfortunately, it's not in bookshops, but you can go on Amazon and you can easily pick up an inexpensive copy, which is, of course, slightly used, but I would strongly recommend that you try it. But most of all, I hope that you enjoy this. So here it comes. It's summer and you may be looking for something to read. In my book, A Feast in 15 Stories, there are 15 chapters. And what's coming next, I'm going to show you, is some of the things you can expect to find. In a chapter called Time for Tea, you'll find the lightest ever sponge cake filled with cream and berries. The misunderstood microwave tells you how to deal with fruit like gooseberries. A chapter called Is It Worth the Trouble will tell you how to make these sweet twirly biscuits. A bit of fantasy, making ice bowls with flowers. This comes from It's Looking Good. Going through the book, you'll learn enough skills to be able to prepare a feast. In the final chapter, there are 13 recipes. This one is for stuffed roasted peppers with rice. From the very first chapter, which is called Five Minutes in the Kitchen, is something I think you're going to like. Hello, I'm in my flat and I want to show you something. I'm going to come closer and show you what it is. You probably think that I'm growing plants. I don't have anywhere to grow plants and I don't have a garden. Now what I'm going to tell you is this is not a plant. It looks like soil with some rosemary growing in it, but what it is, is mushroom patty. The pretend soil for that plant is just mushroom patty. I'm going to show you in a minute how to make it. It's tremendously easy and it contains very few ingredients. And here I've garnished it with a few French beans and sugar peas and to put on the side a couple of grissini. You could have bread, you could put anything with it, and it makes a really good starter. Here are the ingredients. You can use either the large portobello mushrooms cut up, or you can use smaller white mushrooms. In addition, you'll need some fried onions, some ground almond and parsley. I'm not going to take you through the whole process, which is easy, but first you just fry some onions and some mushrooms. To make the pâté smooth, you're going to need one of these two pieces of equipment. The larger one is a Magimix on top of a mixer. The other one is a handheld blender. Here's what the mushroom, onion, almond mixture looks like. Here are the full instructions. This recipe is for two, but to do it for four, you just double it. One other thing. I say to use butter for frying, but if you prefer, just use olive oil and splash in a bit more if you wish. I'm not suggesting that you add this pot of pâté to your display of plants, but I think you will get a lot of fun out of it and your guests will really enjoy eating it. 